Good morning. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Good to see you here. Good morning. Hello, hello. Welcome, Zoners. Okay, hello, guys. Welcome, Zoners. Welcome. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, Moose. Hello, Anissa. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, hello fellow prisoners. How are you guys? I see um, Kamus here. Hello, Kamus. Hello, hello Rini. Hi. Okay, how are you, Kak? Yeah, I'm. I'm very good. How about you? Ah, I'm great. <laughs> And I see. Hello, Devi. Hello. Hello, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. And how are you? Ah, yeah, I'm also great. Uh, I see your background is uh, green, a yeah. green scenery. Where is it? <clears throat> I don't know. I just take off from Google. <laughs> <Sorry>. oh, <okay. laughs> I like uh, I like uh, farmer. Uh, so I take that picture. Wow, that's very cool. I guess. Is uh, it your first time? Yes, uh, this is my first time uh, join in the Brazil. <laughs> wow, welcome. Thank How you. do you know us? Uh, I know from Instagram and the first I know from YouTube. Uh, so I want to try join because I want practice my English because I think my English is dark. So I try to join uh, for speak up uh, in this. Wow. I hope everyone support me. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We, we, we will do. be more than supportive. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, it was it's really nice to see you guys here. Thank you, Kadebi. Thank it's you. It's my pleasure to have you here. Have you here? And um, I think I have uh, Kadian. Hello, Kadian. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Gadian. Oh. How are you, Kak? I'm doing all right. How are you? Oh, I'm great too. Uh, where do you come from, Kak? I'm originally from Medan, but right now I live in Thailand. Wow, oh, you are Thailand. Yes. And is it your first time joining Bidrit Zok? Uh, not really. I've been here many times. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's I stop counting. <laughs> okay. Well, it's great to have you here, Kat. It's my pleasure. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you guys. And welcome to Brizon's class. All right, I will uh, full screen the video. Okay, it's really nice to have you guys here. Thank you for coming to our fun day class. And today I'm going to be the MC. My name is Rini. And yeah, so yeah, before we start uh, the class, as per usual, we have several wonderful announcements. And I believe that you don't want to miss it because it's quite more uh, important. So please listen up carefully and pay attention on your screen. Uh, is it my screen already? Uh, can, uh, you can see that there is my screen on. Is it? Yeah, sure. Okay, then yeah. I will move forward. Great. All right, so for those of you who's not really familiar with Bridzone, especially for the new members, Bridzone is the biggest free English 
community in Jakarta that run by so many people who are all volunteers, including our committees, conductors, and our speakers. And we provide you guys for free classes so you can learn and practice English without having to pay at all. So we are an open platform uh, focus on English education and we're free of judge. So you don't have to worry about such a thing like vocabulary, grammar, or pronunciation because we're here to have fun, right? So Bridgeon have three different classes in a week. The first one is Bridgeon Speaking Academy, uh, which is usually held on Tuesday, start at 7 p.m. And in, the cl in this class, we usually have discussed about everything that relates with public speaking, such as speech, debate, interview, and many more. And the second one is Bridge and Betterment Series, held on Wednesday, start at 7 p.m. as well. And in this class, we usually, we usually discuss the basic skill in English, like listening, writing, reading, and speaking. And the last one is Bridgeon Fun Day class, which is today, we are going to have one on every Saturday start from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. And in this class, we discuss various uh, fun topics, just like what we're going to discuss today. And as you can see from the screen, these are our social media accounts. Our main platform is on IG, Instagram. So please kindly follow us on IG at Bridgezone ID to get more information about our upcoming classes or events. And we have we also upload interesting contents on our IG too. And we also have a new platform where, which is Clubhouse. Please join us on Bridgezone English Community, BZ English Community. And we also have uh, Facebook here at Bridgezone and YouTube on Bridgezone English Community. You can drop your likes and comment on every video that we're going to upload. And we will have some interesting content as well on YouTube. And the last one is our website. You can search us on Bridgezone.id. As a nonprofit organization, and a free community, we have to find a way to make our source of funding. So we have Bizon merchandise here and Bizon Mart to provide you guys with several cool merchandises. We have t-shirt, mask, lanyards. So if you wanna purchase or know more about our product information, you can contact us on our Instagram at Bizon Merch or yeah, you can maybe WhatsApp us on this number as you can see from the screen. And for Bridgeon Mark, we will open it when we run the offline classes. And yeah, the next one is our sponsors. We are very grateful to be supported by some amazing sponsors. The first one is that we have Perpustakaan Dikbud, the Library of the Education Culture Ministry. Um, so yeah, it's uh, where usually we run the offline classes before the pandemic, but unfortunately, it's no longer usable for the time being, yeah, because of the pandemic, hopefully we can go back there right after the situation gets better. Um, but you can still sign up to becoming the member of the library to get the access to some amazing books sources and you can also follow them on at Perpustakaan Dikbud to get details information. And the last one is we also have Atmago. Atmago is a social media application which is really beneficial for you where you can share everything like information or hot issues that happens around you. They also have a cool tagline. It's, we call it Warga Bantu Warga. And you can also practice your writing skill here by 
posting some articles and please don't forget to download it on Google Play Store or App Store. And the last one is our tradition uh, classes. You have, yeah, we have to uh, taking pictures together after the class and yeah. And we're going to have a feedback link after the class so you guys can fill it out the form. So please don't leave the WhatsApp group before we leave, we remove you. So we can uh, improve our class and our uh, speakers to the, uh, for the features. And that's all from me. I hope you guys uh, watch it. Okay, guys, thank you for listening to my uh, announcement. And for today's class, are uh, you guys know what we're going to discuss about? Maybe, uh, Ajeng, do you know, know what we're going to discuss? Ajeng Kartika? Sorry? Do you know about what we're going to discuss for today's class? Okay, so um, actually, I'm a new member here. Oh. And yeah. <laughs> So wow, welcome to Ridburn. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, according to the Instagram, so we are going to talk about the public speaking, isn't it? Yeah, you ten hundred correct. We're going to talk about public speaking, and we here have a awesome uh speaker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is our uh, senior here. We have Alan. He's a speaker <laughs> for today's class. Uh, yeah, Alan. Uh, yes. Maybe you should. Uh, you can talk about yourself. A brief introduction about yourself for us. Okay. Should I share my material or just talk first? Uh, maybe you can talk first about yourself, and then the screen is yours. You can. Uh, share okay. your material. Sure, sure, sure. If you guys get bored about me talking about myself, please just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just start the material. Um, thank you very much, Rini. Uh, thank you, Britzonians. I like to call you Britzonians because for me, it sounds more British that way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to the facilitators, thank you very much for helping out. I really appreciate it. And like you, Miss Debbie, I'm also, this is my first time to Britzone. Uh, and you, Ajung. So I'm very excited to have discovered a new community of you know like-minded people, right? Who have like the same goals and purpose uh, of improving ourselves, right? Especially through English. Um, so this is my first time. I'm just I'm you know I'm just curious. Rini, when did the uh, Britzone start? What year? I believe it's already in 2010 oh okay. around yeah or even earlier we already wow. have the our bit of establishment in a community uh, community as a community right. so we are legal <laughs> okay so you're like a non-profit right yeah it's well awesome up. i think that's just awesome and yeah, it's totally uh good stuff comes from people who you know who are devoted and motivated by volunteering their time and resources uh, so I'm I'm happy to be here, guys. So a little bit my a little bit about myself because I don't really like talking about myself too much. I'm a classic introvert that's been forced by life to become more extroverted, but I think balance is good, so I don't mind it, especially as I'm a Libra. There's one. <laughs> so um, actually, I am Filipino American. Now, what does that mean? Is that my parents um, are both from the Philippines? And they migrated to California before I was born. And the uh, cool fact is the reason they were able to find work or be recruited in the Philippines was because, or is because English is a second language in the Philippines. So back then when they were recruited, there was a big uh, nursing shortage and medical technician shortage in California for some reason. Um, so they recruited a lot of Filipinos to go actually live and work in uh, California and America. And it's all because of English, right? So I could say I was born in California because of English, right? And that's just the, how life works sometimes. 
And so I'm American in that sense, um, being born in California. I went to university in Los Angeles for architecture, right? And from there, after that, I moved to New York City. And actually, I did graphic design. Uh, I was a graphic designer at the beginning and just actually moved my way up and started. In the end, I specialized in corporate communications. Um, so I was working at, uh, I was a consultant, a corporate communication consul consultant at uh, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals uh, at the headquarters on 42nd Street in New York City, which is actually about five blocks away from the United Nations building. So that's just um, the type of uh, how lucky I am and fortunate I am to have uh, lived and worked in New York City. And then after that, I was able to find work at um, Merrill Lynch Investment Banking, which is like one of the biggest, um, or was one of the biggest investment banks in the United States. Um, I remember reading a newsletter they had through their intranet, right? And they were saying how they made profits of over $3 billion in one quarter. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> Some company, you know, like Amazon didn't make a billion dollars until like their 12th year, right? Um, but here, this, you know, this investment bank, because it's investment banking, right? They had this thing like $3 billion in the first quarter. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> come, I'm not seeing that money. But no, that's just a whole different world, uh, investment banking and, you know, Wall Street in New York City, which is the, the core of the center of uh, United States finance, right? So, which is like here in Jakarta, right? This is the core of the Indonesian financial center, right? So everything's here, um, you know, Tokopedia, all the banks and whatnot. So um, I came to Jakarta from New York City in 2002. Actually, I didn't know anything about Indonesia, to be honest, I'm sorry, uh, I apologize before that, because actually um, Indonesia was only known when they changed presidents. <laughs> So that's the only time I heard in the news was like when they changed the president, right? Um, Suharto, then Megawati, and then Gus Dur. So I actually heard that in the news, but I couldn't place it uh, geographically until I came here. And actually, my plan was not to come to Indonesia, it was to go to the Philippines, because I wanted to learn my cultural roots, my heritage from my parents, right? And I want to go back to the source of my uh, culture. But unfortunately, when I got there, I wasn't able to find employment or a job. So I had to, I was running out of money, right? So I came here to Jakarta to teach English because that's uh, the easiest job for me to find at that time. And so I've been here since 2002 and I've actually I've been very lucky in not just teaching English, but I worked in a Japanese uh, multi-finance company. Um, after my first stint as a teacher. Then after that, I worked, I was a lecturer and administrator at the London School of Public Relations, Jakarta. So if you see the logo actually of LSPR, that's my logo, I designed that logo. So there you go. <laughs> and that comes from my graphic design background in New York City. So I'm one of those things that they call a jack of all trades and master of none. Right. So, I mean, for me, it's a good thing. That's my life. There's just the way it's been. So I'm not an expert in one thing, but I just like dabbling in many things. And that's sort of my character and my nature of just being curious. Right. Um, and then the one thing I love, and I just discovered my passion for teaching when I came to Jakarta, was that being a teacher, you never stop learning, which is the great thing. So if you guys, you know, ever get to that point where you become a teacher, even if you're not um, familiar or have the background for it, it's a great way to learn about that topic, right? Or that expertise. And then the more you learn about it, the more you can then share that knowledge and just teach other people with it, right? Um, people who need your guidance or need you, you know, you to share your knowledge. Like before this, we were talking about NFTs and crypto and all that kind of stuff. And I just naturally shared what I learned about it. I'm not an expert obviously in that web 3.0, but it's just like me sharing is not going to hurt anybody. Um, but of course you gotta do your own research, right? So that's a little bit about myself. Um, I came to Jakarta single and I got married in 2009 because I got tired of being single. 
<laughs> it got boring. Um, so now I have uh, one wife, just one, and two daughters. And uh, they're 11 and 15. And they go to school here in central Jakarta. Um, and we've been here now for, I guess, I move around Jakarta. Jakarta is my home base. Actually, Jakarta is the city that I've been the longest in my whole life, which is surprising, but that just shows how fast time goes. Okay, cool. Any questions or should I just jump in? Anybody? All good? I think I'll go there. All right, all right. And your Rini, how do you want to do the questions? Um, Shall we just in, wait until the end of the um, presentation to go into the question and answers of the material or as we go? Maybe as we go. Okay, right. So um, just turn on your mics and feel free to just say, excuse me, I'd like to ask a question so that I know I can hear you, right? And feel free. I mean, make it as many questions as you can and make it as interactive as you can, right? Um, there's no strict, I'm not very strict about um, how we're going to do this. I just want you guys to have as much fun as possible and uh, be interested. If it gets boring at any time, let me know. And I'll try to <laughs> maybe sing a song. No, I'm just kidding. I don't sing. All right. So into the material. Um, basically, we're here is a journey to build our confidence, right? And we're going to actually take a and in the beginning, we're going to start and talk about, well, let me just keep going here. Um, I already explained myself, right? So I don't need to introduce myself. Um, let me talk about Wall Street English, sorry, quickly. So um, this is just the reality that I've experienced since I came here uh, to Jakarta. They can't, you know, many Indonesians basically absorb their English, right, through content, right? Whether it be TikTok, whether it be Instagram or Netflix or YouTube, right? And especially from school, the way they're being taught English, right? There's some gaps, right? Which it doesn't maximize or really facilitate the learning of English. So when we, you are at school, basically the, you, the way you would learn it would be, you know, classic reading, writing, listening, and speaking, right? But a lot of it was very passive in a sense, okay? Like the teacher will give you the homework, you fill out the homework, and then you review the homework in class. That's it, right? So what I call this is it's like a sponge, right? The members or the students are like sponges. They're just passive. They're just soaking up the English and hopefully whatever stays stays and whatever evaporates is gone forever until you encounter that English again. Now the Wall Street English method this actually does do the same things but it's how you do it which makes the difference right. Um, listening, speaking, reading and writing and what I mean by that is that we actually activate the English and um, some people who maybe have joined Wall Street English before understand that what we're trying to do is to make it an active aspect, right? Of you are engaging the language, I'm engaging English. So what I like to do, um, and this happened last year, on the left is we had the English high tea at the Raffles Hotel on Casablanca, right? Right next to, uh, What's that? Lotte, right? Seventh, Seventh Avenue. Um, so we all the members signed up, and then we all went and met and had a high tea event that was actually um, done and collaborated with the Raffles um, management and chef. So the the manager the manager from Raffles talked about the brand, right, and how it originated and how they came to Jakarta and all that kind of stuff. And we asked them some question and answers. And then the, the Raffles chef came out and talked about the, the pastries they cooked or whatever they prepared for the high tea event, right? So it's not just, you know, online or offline inside the center, but it's actually more about you live it, right? You engage it with your senses, right? With the listening, speaking, but then tasting as well or smelling the environment, right? And the whole senses, and it just becomes more of 
part of your memory cells, part of your uh, language recognition. And then over here on the right, we did actually did wall climbing. And because my center is in the living world, in Alam Sutra, right, South Tangerang, we found a, a wall climbing um, center in BSD, right? And so a bunch of us went there and did wall climbing. And yeah, there was some Indonesian speaking, but you know, I would go around and just start yelling, English, please, English, please. So to get them to engage, supporting each other, right, in the wall climbing, right? And then helping each other like uh, with the uh, putting on the harness and all kind of stuff in English. So, you know, like you're doing here, but more in an active setting in a way, right? So that's the thing about Wall Street English is that we do the basics with the foundation, but we try to energize it, right? So it becomes engaging, fun, interesting, and lasting, right? Okay, cool. So that's a little bit about Wall Street English. Now today, there's um, basically two parts. The first part, we're gonna talk about skills, right? Um, related to English, but also related to uh, your career or organizations. So and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then we're gonna, have a like a second part is going to be a roadmap on building your confidence right which is actually one of the skills uh communication skills right and then the end result would be we'll do like a final uh, takeaway um related to reviewing and summarizing how to build confidence okay all right so quickly uh which do you think it is, hard or soft? So I'm going to go around the room, and hopefully you're not too shy to answer. So let's see, Edwin, speaking of foreign language. So yeah, it, what do you think? Is that a hard skill or soft skill? Uh, I would say that it is a soft skill because we need a communication skill, how to interact and how to react to uh, our responder. Okay, now just keep in mind, you said communication skill, and that's a number two. Right? Oh, okay, so it's, it relates to the, <laughs> so the number two. Okay, so so you, you're still going to stick with soft skill, right? Yeah, yeah, I still, uh, I still consider it as soft. Oh, it turns out to be hard. <laughs> no problem. That's why you're here, right? So, yeah, it's a hard skill. Um, then let's try with you, Nadia, Miss Nadia. What about number two, communication skills? What do you think? Yes, I think communication skills is part of soft skills. Yeah, good job. And you have a 50-50 chance, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, uh, number three, PowerPoint skills. Let's go boy, girl, boy, girl, right? So Mr. Dian from Thailand. Um, I think it's a, a hard skill. Very good. Where in Thailand are you, Dian? I'm right now in Raichapuri. I have no idea. What that is. <laughs> okay, it's about 100 kilometers from Bangkok. Is it north or south of Bangkok? Um, I'm not sure. I need to look at the map. <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't know where you are. You're just somewhere yeah. on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just terrible at geographic. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, man. All right. Thank you, Dion. Uh, let's welcome. see. Uh, Miss Ajang, what about number four, agile management? Oh, you're muted, dude. Unmute. <laughs> um, I, um, first of all, I have no idea what is alignment a human. Can you? Um, okay. This, can anybody help explain what agile management is, if you know? So it's not always me talking. Anybody want to share? Can I? Can I try? Sure, sure. Well, I think uh, agile management is uh, just uh, it's it's a quality where you uh, where you uh, try to be try to survive. <laughs> this it's basically how you thrive uh, in the world, like. Uh, when you, when you face uh, when you face a problem, so so um, so you can be a tougher uh, person if that if that if that makes sense. <laughs> that was a really good try, Rama, but wrong. <laughs> I'm not being harsh on you, but no, that's so much confidence in that answer. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, <laughs> um, it's actually more specific than that. 
you, you would, that's, if you looked at the vocabulary, that would be a very sensible answer. But it's actually a very, it's a specialty in management, right? Um, especially related to IT management and software development. So okay. does anybody know? Agile management, want to give it a try? One more try before I just- Can I give it a try? <laughs> please, please, please. Maybe I would say agile management when you can manage uh, to respond quickly or easily to adaption and new change. Yeah, very good. Um, that's part of it. And a lot of agile management is where you have this thing called, you have the sprints. And the idea is that um, you'll be given design specifications at the beginning of the sprint, right? And then you have to actually develop and code it. And so by the end of the sprint, you are then submitting it to the end user for them to approve it, right? And then the end user will give you the thumbs up, thumbs down, or give you comments or revisions. So you're being very agile when you are basically um, creating or developing something. And it's always with the aim to make sure that the end user is satisfied um, or whoever's the next chain in the of the process is satisfied with the result that you are producing at that time. So it just it doesn't have to be just for uh, IT code, software development. It could be for manufacturing, right? It could be for creative uh, content, right? If you're, uh, let's say, working with a, you know, an end user and they assign you to do like a graphic or a poster or a video. So it's like, it's just being very agile to make sure that the end user um, has a, the stakeholder has a say in the creative process, right? Okay. Of the uh, whatever you're developing. So Ajahn, back to you, hard or soft? I think it's soft, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So don't worry, we'll explain about hard skills and soft skills after this, but I just wanna see where everyone's at at this moment. Okay, uh, we need another oh. victim, you know, one of my favorite words in Indonesian, korban, no, not, Sukaralawa, a volunteer, another volunteer. Um, Mr. ACO, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, my name is Acho, actually. Acho! Yeah. <laughs> okay, Acho. Right? But yeah, that's what people call me. Okay, what do you think, number five, time management? Time management, I thought it would uh, follow certain uh, pattern like hard soft, hard soft, but actually it's not. So I guess time management would be soft skill. Good job. Good job. All right. Thank you, Acho. Nice to meet you. Nice All right. To meet you. Next, um, critical thinking. Niken? Yes, I think it's soft skill. There you go. Good job. Or good guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And what about uh, next? We have to go back to a boy or male. Ilham, is that correct? Molana? Yes. Public Sir, speaking. What, is public, what do you think public speaking Public is? speaking is a hard skill. Good job. Are you a public speaker, Ilham? Um. I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are in this uh, forum. Okay, last yeah. one. Um, go back to a girl, Miss Atika. Are you there, Miss Atika? Okay, uh, let's try somebody else. Miss Pospita? I guess for confidence is a soft skill. I would make that a good guess. Thank you. All right, cool. So very good guys, hard skills or soft skills. Actually, so here's a definition, okay? So it's very, it's not that difficult once you understand that hard skills are basically what you have to technically learn, right? So you need, you need to, you know, come in to interact with very specific uh, instructions, right? Or knowledge, right? And you gain it, like it says here, through your life, through your career or education, right? And you have to put in plenty of time, but it's very technical in its uh, sense. So that's why if you, the difference between the foreign language and communication, communication is more general, right? Um, and in, there's, yeah, of course, communication is basically how we gain our communication skills over a lifetime of communicating with each other in a private or public setting. 
But the foreign language is very technical in terms of you have to technically understand the vocabulary of that language, the grammar of that language, the tenses, and all the associated um, you know, um, aspects of that language, whatever language that could be from Indonesian to English to Sundanese or Javanese, etc. <laughs> um, the soft skills, right? Like it says here, um, are personal based, okay? And it shapes you as a character. It shapes your character. It's a part of your habits, right? On a daily basis, because you are what you do. You are what you think. You are what you act, right? How you act. So those are the soft skills and how you interact with others, okay? Our soft skills. All right. Any questions? All good? Yeah. Okay. I'll take that as a yes with the nodding heads. So this is a list of the hard skills on the left and the soft skills on the right. You might want to take a screenshot if you want. Okay. Just feel free to take as many screenshots as you want. And I'll charge you for each one later. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so as you can see on the side, right, on the right side, there's creativity. Okay. Um, there's really no technical training for creativity. It's like um, if you have that passion, that sense of need. In fact, I think everyone on this planet is creative in some sense, right? Biologically, of course. Um, and then like problem solving, of course, all these. Empathy, very good one. Critical thinking, right? Um, very important. And a lot of these, um, like critical thinking, is actually you are expected to utilize your create critical thinking soft skill um, basically in junior high school and high school in America and just carries over into your secondary education in terms of your bachelor's, master's and postdoctoral. And then on the left, you can see it's very, you know, hard skills, sorry, very technical in sense. But this is actually skewed towards technology and IT. All right. Okay, so that's the hard skills and soft skills. Uh, let me. So, which do you think is more valuable, hard skills or soft skills? Now, of course, your definition of value is up to you to define, right? So, let's see, Miss Oliana, can I call on you? What do you think? Which one is more valuable for you, hard Maybe skills or soft skills? Soft skill. Why do you think soft skills are more important? Um, because it's important. <laughs> <laughs> like oxygen is important. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Let's see. Um, if Mr. Or is that correct? Odi? Are you there? Odi? O-D-H-I-E? Okay, what about Bobby? Since you turn your camera mm. on. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, my take on this uh, of this question, I think soft skills is more important because uh, soft skill is can be shape our attitude to our uh, problem, and then uh, this attitude can make us different with others. Yeah, very good. That's a good point. So let me just share what my opinion is or my point of view, and it's a trick answer, <laughs> a trick question, right? So it depends. Um, actually on the context and purpose of where you are at that moment, right? And we'll talk more about this, right? Um, context and purposes. But just to give it, and thank you for that, Bobby. Um, let me explain. So here, right? Uh, let's see, let's see. Can I call on a facilitator? Ms. Dina? So you don't get bored. Oh my goodness, he's like gone. <laughs> what do you think this photo is the, on the screen? What is that? I think he's an engineer fixing a what, submarine. <laughs> Could be, I'm not sure. But yeah, he's actually a underwater welder, right? So he's a welder, right? Um, which is, you know, joining uh, alloys like metals together, right? So do you think this is a hard skill or soft skill? I think it's a hard skill. Definitely, right? You need to learn the how to be not only a welder, which is not that easy, but how to be like an underwater diver, right? 
So that's actually another skill, like diving is a skill by itself. So it's like you're combining all these hard skills. And actually, this is based on the American uh, statistics, right? The average underwater welder makes over 53 million per month. And that's just the average, right? And I think everyone here is either above average or higher, right? And then if you look at the top 90%, which is like, you know, the top 90% of any career, they're making over 1.4 billion per year. So it can be a very lucrative, uh, hard skill, right, career. But then if we look over here, um, let's see. Do we have any other one? Okay. Uh, Coco. Yes. So what are we looking at here? Other than beautiful <laughs> Korean people. <laughs> yeah, I saw this uh, Korean uh what sinetron? <laughs> <laughs> Korean drama, dude. Korean drama, yes. <laughs> uh, Kordra. Kordra. Okay. Okay. What's your question? Is it soft skill or? Yeah. So what? What is the job that we're looking at? Basically, with the job title. The job is actually creating apps. Yeah, but it says right here she is the. She's the CEO. Yeah. So what skills is primarily? most important being uh, a CEO? I would say, uh, I don't know, just a lucky guess here, soft skill. 50-50, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and I would argue that soft skills is probably more important as a CEO than hard skills because for the hard skills positions, you can hire people to do that. And that's their only focus is on, that's why you have the programmers, right? And the database yes. people and the big data people are, the UI people, right? The UX people, they're just focused on those hard skills. Whereas the CEO needs to have, is more related to, and thank you for that, Coco. You're welcome. And what I want to address here is that a true leader, right? Like these Elon Musk, if you know their backgrounds, all these people actually have a good base in hard skills, but what makes them differentiates them from others with those same hard skills is their soft skills, right? So Elon Musk, right? He didn't go to school for rocket science, right? For aerospace engineering, but that didn't stop him from building probably one of the most innovative, the most, I would say the most innovative uh, rocket companies in the world, right? SpaceX. They innovated the fact of reusable rockets, right? So that guy's just, you know, he's just a genius in that sense that he's able to learn any of his hard skills. So you could say Elon Musk is more on the hard skills. If you look at, uh, if you study or learn, look at his videos and everything that's talked about him and seen his interviews, his soft skills aren't that great, right? But his hard skills are probably, you know, on the genius level. And then the next two, this is the, I forget his name, but he's the CEO of Google, Alphabet, right? Uh, and here, I forget his name also, they're from Microsoft, CEO of Microsoft. They're both, they started as software engineers, right? Or engineers. But then what differentiated them from other engineers, soft skills. And then of course we have Mr. Steve Jobs, who's actually not a programmer, right? He doesn't know much too much about the uh, technology from a technical point of view, but he had a great sense of design. His design skills was just off the charts, right? And on top of that, his communication skills, right? He was, his, he was great in marketing, was great in communicating. Like he made uh, Apple launches a cultural event, right? And I don't think any other company can match that. Maybe an industry can, but not a company like Apple, right? Uh, maybe Samsung in a certain way, and then Google in a way with their Pixel uh, mobile phones, which we can't buy here in Indonesia <laughs> for some reason. But so what I'm trying to say is that to be a great leader, right? You need to have a combination of what I call the quality habits of the soft skills with the competencies of the hard skills. And then that will shape your culture. 
because that's what the great leaders do. And that's where the culture comes in, is that the culture, the culture of any organization, any company, it could be a college you know, association, it could be all the way to, you know, a company like Apple. The culture reflects its leaders, right? What does that company value? It's based on what the leaders' values are, right? Most of the time, because the, the leaders will decide the company's values, the company's mission statement, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so calling the habits plus competency is basically the culture. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that related to the next part. All right, so that's with the hard skills and soft skills. Okay, um, the next is we're going to go and jump into confidence, right? Related to public speaking. Okay, so this is part two now. Um, I, again, I certainly suggest you could take uh, screenshots or ask questions because it's going to be related to the next phase of this Britzone uh, in engagement today, which will be the FGD where we break out into the rooms. So I'm gonna talk about confidence right now. And these are the three parts related to my uh, material related to confidence and defining it, um, how to set it up, and then how to execute, okay? So we'll spend a lot of time on the definition and setup and we'll go really fast in execution because execution is more about you doing it. So of course I can't do it for you, but it's about you guys doing it on your own or with others. So first, what is confidence? So if you didn't know, it actually comes from the Latin word fidere. Okay, I hope I pronounced that correctly. And fidere means to trust, okay? So confidence is to trust yourself, of course, right? Internally, okay? And that's, it's a very internal skill in a sense, right? Soft skill to gain, okay? There's no technical jargon or material related to confidence, but it's a habit you develop, right? Like we talked about, it's a quality habit you develop as a character internally, okay? So we're definitely talking about a soft skill here, right? Agree? So confidence means that you have the, you trust yourself to step out of line, to be different, to lead, right? Um, which is a challenge here, okay? Now it's getting better, but you know, I remember when I first came to Jakarta in 2002, you would never see uh, females with their shoulders in public. You never saw women smoking. In fact, when I first came here, I rarely saw women riding a motorcycle. The majority was mostly men, right? And the women were usually passengers. And this is before the automatic, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, motorcycles, all right? It was mostly manual, mostly men. It's mostly men uh, smoking in public. You never saw women smoking in public. You never saw their shoulders bared in the malls or anything like that. Very conservative country, but it's you know progressed right over the past twenty years, which is good, right? Progress is good. Good progress that is. And so here, this is a classic photo. It's not. It is staged in a way, right? Because I don't think they normally eat lunch on an I beam. Um, this is the building of the Empire State Building. And if you notice, it's they have it's because they've done it so much, right? Being on this high above ground, it's second nature. It's not something they think about, right? It's just they are confident to be above that because that's where they live and in, engaged, you know, most of their day is above ground, right? So this is nothing new. This is not like them, you know, there's no safety harness, which is like, you know, nowadays would be against the law, right? With the um, safety um, hazard, what do you call that, prevention. Now, again, like I said, uh, confidence is internal, right? It's totally internal, okay? But it's how we reflect on our state of confidence, right? Now, this is where the trouble gets in. And what stops our confidence is when we reflect too much. Classic overthinking, right? 
So I want to go and define some of the things that prevent us from building a confidence. And the first one is imposter syndrome. Has anyone heard of imposter syndrome? No. Okay. No. No problem. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Yes. <laughs> Who said I yes? I, me. <laughs> go ahead. DM, what's your take on imposter syndrome? Okay, so it's a psychological condition when you are always questioning yourself and also you feel that you are never enough or never good enough. Right. It's not this, right? It's not this game. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this, right? You're talking about this. It's like you have this public mask, right? Where everyone interacts with you and they see you as this person, as this, you know, uh, leader or this, you know, very confident person, but actually behind the mask, you're doubting yourself, right? You feel like actually you're faking it and hopefully people don't catch on to the fact that you're not really capable of doing what they think you're capable of doing, right? Um, so this is imposter syndrome where you feel like you're going to be revealed for the fake that you are, especially when, if you, oh, if there's this inventing Anna on Netflix, right? And that's the whole thing was that she's an imposter, but she's su such a psycho that it's not fake to her. It's real, right? Even yeah. though the rest of the reality or the rest of the world, once they take away the mask, they realize that she's just nobody, basically. And she's been faking it the whole time. So, but that's a different type of imposter syndrome where she's become, you know, a little bit, she lost it and she became what she thought she was, right? Which you have to do to fake it that well for that long four millions of dollars and all that kind of stuff okay the next one is anxiety right um this is a classic uh, painting uh anxiety usually happens because you are afraid of what people are thinking okay so you have this fear of what you cannot control which is really bad trap right it's a very dangerous trap when you fear something that's out of your control right and the more you think about it the more you fear it the worse it gets because you can't do anything about it, right? So the classic case of anxiety is what we call stage fright, right? So actually right now we're in a public setting. Um, people cannot express themselves or do perform at times uh, because of their worry that they're going to be not good enough or they just don't know their lines or whatever. So stage fright is a major thing. And actually Naomi, right, um, Osaka, I wouldn't say she got stage fright. She just got pissed off at the French press <laughs> when they were had all these, you know, sort of like racial or, you know, um, stereotypical questions, right? And she just didn't want to deal with it in the public um, arena, right? Through media, right? So she pulled back, right? But this is more on the mental health, right? So there is validity to this fear, this to this anxiety, right? where you have to make sure you take care of your mental health. And I think Simon Biles also did that in the Olympics, the number one gymnast in America. She had to pull back because she couldn't take the pressure, right, of being the best at that moment, even though, she, you know, everyone knew she was and she is. And, you know, Miss Osaka was actually um, the number one, uh, what do you call it, richest athlete, right? She had the most revenues in 2021 and she just pulled back. She, has, she had to take care of herself, regardless of her uh, contractual uh, agreements and that kind of stuff. So there is validity to that. But then another, what do you call this, um, mountain to prevent our confidence is the fear of failure. And I would say in Indonesia, this is very big because there's a stigma that if you are known as a failure, that it will stick with you for the rest of your life and that people will always know your reputation as a failure, right? Um, especially through school. So like I, I know, you know, I have two daughters. My Indonesian wife cannot, cannot accept our children failing, not just because of their um, failure in school, but because of her reputation as a mother with all the other mothers in that school have now identified her failing children as a failing mother, right? So it's big. It's not just, <laughs> it's not just the F on that uh, test or exam, it's more cultural, right? 
So we, that's a big thing here. And of course, the parents' anxiety feeds into the children because the children, you know, they 90% of their learning are from parents, right? And you absorb that. And over the years, you picked it up from grade school, junior high, high school, college. The fear of failure is huge here, right? And actually has a big effect on the entrepreneurial um, culture here, environment in Indonesia, right? Because the investors don't want failure. They cannot accept failure. They don't want to lose money. But unfortunately, entrepreneurials and you know, Silicon Valley, failure is actually a learning process. So it's understood to be accepted. And we'll talk more about that a little bit. Okay. So these are the what I call the mountains, internal mountains that everyone in this room, me included, or maybe some of you don't, have to deal with in terms of reducing our confidence. And I'm one, imposter syndrome exposed as a fraud, anxiety, right? The fear of not being able to control what people are thinking, big one. And in terms of like people reacting, okay? And then being known as a failure. Okay, so all of these on a daily basis, we are engaging with these fears. And the more you engage with it, of course, it's gonna take over, right? And that's why you're here, right? How do we conquer this, right? So I'm gonna give you the setup. But first, well, and we're gonna talk about the breakthroughs, right? How to break through these fears to build your confidence. And I'm gonna bring up the former governor of my home state, <laughs> the Terminator. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. This was my governor, dude. <laughs> California. Uh, the Terminator, uh, Conan yeah. the Barbarian. Was uh, the gov that shows you that just shows you like how much people love celebrities. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna watch a video from him and then we're gonna go continue from there. So please. Uh wait, I gotta make sure the sound. I wanna make sure the sound is being shared. Share sound. I always forget. Um, also, Rainy, can you let me know if the volume is too low or too high, okay? All right, on. Okay. I'm here to talk about success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. I mean, as you know, I was born in 1947 in Austria after the Second World War. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled onto my vision. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. And then one day I went to school. I remember I was 11 years old. And they showed a documentary about America. And there they showed in this documentary the huge skyscrapers, the high rises, the huge bridges, the six lane freeways. And all of this stuff in the same stuff, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be around here with these little farmhouses and these little buildings. I want to be in America. One day after school, I walked by a store in Graz. So I went inside and I looked around and then I saw a magazine. I saw a bodybuilding magazine that had Reg Park on the cover. Reg Park was then a three time Mr. Universe. And I saw him on the big screen as Hercules. I read that and I said to myself, wow, this is the blueprint for my life. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to become a bodybuilding champion, just like Reg Park. I want to get into movies, just like Reg Park. And I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous, just like Reg Park. Do you know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going, that I'm going to become this bodybuilding champion, just like him. 
So it was just a question of how do you do it? I was so relieved because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. So people always ask me when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face? And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I am shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2,000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. At the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. So let me tell you something, visualizing a goal and going after it makes it fun. You got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You got to have a purpose. I'm here to talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Okay, we're going to move on. <laughs> okay, so quickly, um, if you notice, Arnold is successful because of the hard skill from bodybuilding. Right. And then he next skill he picked up was acting. Right. And then from there, through acting, he developed his communication skill. Right. Which allowed him to be a politician to then become the governor of the state of California. So he didn't pick up the soft skill, I would say. Well, I, actually, if you there's a documentary of him when he was doing the bodybuilding, but he actually started to work on his communication skills and he actually purposely went into Hollywood because he wanted to master his communication skills. And then that would just lead him to the rest of his life. So again, those combination of the two skills, right? Hard skills and soft skills. Now going back about what he last said um, related to purpose, right? I used to think that we only had one purpose in our life or I only had one purpose in life. Right. And I had, it was my goal in life to figure out what was that purpose? What's that master purpose that's going to make me successful and be the best person I can be. And I realized it's not about having one purpose, but understanding what is your purpose for a very specific goal. That's very different. Okay. So if, quickly, I want to talk about um, Mies van der Rohe. He's an architect from the 1920s and 30s all the way. He's responsible for the, well, he's one of the most, uh, one of the architects, legends, responsible for modern, ar modern architecture. Okay. He's not the only one. So here we have uh, the Barcelona Pavilion. It's actually still there if you manage to go to Barcelona. It's next to the Olympic Park in Barcelona. And this is timeless architecture, which is very familiar to us today, right? We can easily identify it as modern architecture, right? Very simple, clean lines, right? Form follows function, okay? But if you compare it to the architecture of that day, the typical architecture looked like this on this brick building. So can anybody guess when the Barcelona Pavilion was built, designed and built? Can anybody give me a guess what year the Barcelona Pavilion was built? Or what decade, if you want to give it, if you don't know the year. Anybody? 18. What, 1918? Yeah. Bobby, all right. Anybody else? One more guess? Thirty, maybe? 1930s? Ah, that's not bad. Who said that? I want to get a pro. Huh? Acho. 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 Very uh -huh. good. 
1929, oh. right? So almost more than a hundred years ago. And what was groundbreaking and innovative, you know, it's like a spaceship back then is now common nowadays. Is that, that's what you call the timeless aspect. So why am I talking about um, Ms. Vandero? Okay. Well, he had a specific purpose for his architecture and it was a direct reflection of um, World War I. Right. So basically, the Bauhaus movement was a reaction to World War One and the mass destruction and mass loss of life and the stupidity of those politicians, like what's happening around in Russia and Ukraine. Right. Um, so he want they wanted to change the way that people looked at architecture, how they lived their lives in built environments. Right. And he went about doing that by designing everything. And that's where this quote comes up. God is in the details, right? So he designed everything. So even the chairs that they use for the Barcelona, if you see it here, it's here in white, they're still selling those chairs today, right? And they're called the Barcelona chairs by Mies van der Rohe. And it's like a, a classic, classic a piece of um, furniture or interior design. So that's what you notice, like a lot of the great architects, they really get into the details because they need to satisfy the purpose so that everything you interact with in their architectural space has a purpose. It's very detailed because they have a vision of where do you want to be. And this even goes into their graphic design, right? Again, this is from the Bauhaus movement, very abstract and modernistic compared to you know, the design times. And how does that bring us to Arnold? Well, if you heard about him, what he just said, he was very detailed, right? Every rep, every you know, curl, right? Brought him to that vision of where he wanted to be in the goal, right? And that brings me up to how you need design systems. So this is the you know, this is one of the things. How do you create the systems, design the systems that help you achieve your goals, right? Now, the first thing that Arnold said was you need to have a vision. Same thing as the architect, Ms. Bendro. He had a vision for what architecture should be, modern architecture. Arnold had a vision where he wanted to be, you know, as uh, the Mr. Universe, right? So you need to make sure once you have that vision that you have a plan to get to that vision. And so I call this outlines. Uh, does anybody know who these two are? Patrick and Spongebob. <laughs> so, Rini, which one's your favorite? Spongebob uh, or Patrick? Spongebob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, does your boyfriend or husband remind you of Spongebob? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm more of a Patrick kind of guy. I always root for the underdog. I think Patrick is just, you know, a reflection of all of Spongebob's... Um, you know, worst attributes and best attributes. Anyway, so when it comes to public speaking, you need to have an outline, right? You need to have these steps, take a screenshot, it's okay, of what you need to do to help improve your public speaking, right? So you need to do exercises on breathing. You need to video yourself. You need to record yourself. You have to make sure you have eye contact, right? You can have good eye contact you know, in a Zoom meeting by making sure you look at the camera and not just at the thumbnails, right? That's eye contact. Um, sound authentic, don't sound fake. Now, when you make, you have to make sure how to sound authentic is that you're not copy pasting material from somewhere else, but it's your own original material. You can't be authentic if you're copying someone else's, you know, inspirations or materials, okay? Although you can steal. <laughs> So I think it was Pablo Picasso that said, uh, good artists copy, but great artists steal, right? So I'm the one who likes to steal, okay? And it's not that you're stealing, you know, the, the actual um, result, but you're stealing the concept and the systems behind it, the process, right? Next, um, the speech rate. So if you notice, sometimes I'll throw in silence right? Silence is just as important as speaking or giving sound. Why? Because it lets the audience think. It gives them space, right? To absorb and to consider whatever you just said. 
Uh, speak clearly, that's more about pronunciation, right? Um, so of course, a lot of Indonesians need to work on their pronunciation, especially if you're Javanese. <laughs> um, Javanese English is the best. <laughs> and I totally can't stand Singlish. Oh my God. I don't know what happened with the English in Singapore. It just got messed up in the gutter somehow. They mixed it with, uh, what is it, from Paranakan, Chinese, uh, maybe a little uh, Indonesian, Indonesian, Melayu. Yeah. With Engl oh my God, please do. I'm just can't. If Indonesians, Jakarta starts sounding like Singapore, I'm leaving. All right. I just, <laughs> that's why I couldn't live in Singapore. Okay? It's, just, it's just messed up. I'm sorry. Just choose a language. All right. Is it going to be English, <laughs> Chinese? I don't care. Just choose a language. Right. So that's just my beef. Um, but the great, you know, Singapore is awesome. I love it. Singapore Zoo, Marina Bay Sands, all that kind of stuff. But the, the language, I don't know. That's just me. I'm sorry. Body language, right? Especially offline or, you know, in person, body language, you know, the posture, right? How you walk across the room. What do you do with your hands, right? Okay. And then, of course, planning ahead, right? So there shouldn't be any surprises, with your material and what you're speaking about, okay? So this is the framework, right? So it's like the certain, what are the things you need to do to become successful um, in public speaking? So these are nine good ones, okay? That you guys can research on your own and look for different exercises related to um, speaking in public, okay? Um, next is feedback systems, okay? Now, what are feedback systems? Feedback systems is basically you get feedback on whatever you are doing. So if you remember, we talked about agile management. That's basically a sort of like feedback system where you're developing and creating, and then you get feedback instantly, right? Um, so feedback systems are very important because we become biased, right? And then it's always good to get constructive critical comments and also and make sure you're it makes sure that your ego is not too high it's a exercise of humility all right so feedback systems number two so outlines feedback systems and the last thing is learn how to learn easier said than done but if you can keep practicing this skill of how to learn. One, it keeps you young. <laughs> Two, right? You will always be using it until the day you die. No doubt, right? Learning how to learn. So like I was talking about failure, right? So I showed the bike here because anybody in this room ride the bike for the first time and not fall? Anybody? Anybody? No, I doubt it. If you are, then you're a superhero. Um, but if you notice, when you were a kid and you got on that bike, everybody fell. In other words, everybody failed. But what did you do? You got back on, you got the feedback from your failure, and you adjusted your speed, or maybe you adjusted your steering, right? or you adjusted your balance, right? So through the failure is where you get the data so that you can process it and keep testing, right? To make sure that you achieve success in whatever you're doing, okay? Big things. So learn how to learn, feedback systems, outlines, okay? So that's basically the main crux of how, what you need to do. Now, how do you execute? right, which is the next thing, okay? And it, it always comes down to practice, practice, practice. Any skill, hard or soft, you need to practice a million times, okay? You need to devote yourself to the practice. You need to make the time. You are here right now because you're practicing your English listening comprehension. You're practicing your English you know, conversation, okay? You're reading, okay? You're understanding. The goal is to think in English, right? And speak in English. 
That's the main goal. But you need to practice that, okay? Similar to the F1 pit crew. And then the more you practice, it's not just the quantity, but the quality, right? So the quality of the, of the practice means that you then make it into a habit. Now, this also means that quality becomes a habit because you have high standards of quality, right? It's not accepted standards or common standards. No, that's not quality. That's average, right? You want to make sure your personal standards are at the highest they can be, right? And you want to surround yourself with quality people with those high quality standards. So if you do that, if you're surrounded in an environment where everyone is of the high quality thinking, right? And you have high goals and everybody is executing it because it's now a daily habit, professionally or personally, then you can only but succeed, right? And that's what separates, that's what happens. That becomes sort of like, a, if you notice all the major, um, like Facebook, Amazon, they, Tesla, SpaceX, they surround themselves with brilliant people. Elon Musk doesn't know how to design a rocket engine. So he hires the best rocket engineers and then he feeds off them and challenges them because he's coming outside the box, right? So they're always challenging themselves at the highest quality. And if you notice, SpaceX is all about designing failure into their learning process. So them crashing rockets is not an accident. It's an expected outcome. Why are they doing that? Because they're getting the data from that failure so that the next time they launch and want to land that rocket, they already know how to compensate. So it doesn't crash, but you can't get that data unless you blow up a rocket, <laughs> a rocket that costs maybe $10 million, right? So what investor in Indonesia will say, oh yeah, you can have my $10 million so that you can learn how to fail. Mm, see, that's my point. We need a change of mindset, right? Okay, so next one, like this goes back to the uh, feedback loop. Seek criticism. Do not be, do not shy away from it, right? Seek it. If you want to be better, you have to learn where you're weak. Don't just focus on your strengths, right? Work on your weaknesses so that you become better overall, right? So that's the execution. And the last point, and this is basically just the takeaways, we're basically done with my material, is the takeaways, right? Practice, practice, practice. And that means you need to have the courage, okay? Be brave, be true. It's okay to doubt yourself, but you know, it's also good to realize that it's part of the process, okay? It's not the end result. Second one, purpose of the moment. So very quickly, like I said, Arnold had a purpose. Ms. Van der Rohe had a purpose, right? All the leaders have a purpose, but in the moment, right? So like when I'm at home with my family, what's my purpose? To be the best father and husband I can be with my family. If I'm at Wall Street, it's to be the best manager, to be the best facilitator, to help my members succeed, right? When I'm driving a car, what's my purpose? To be the best driver, safest driver at that moment. So you really need to identify what is your purpose at that moment and make sure you seek the quality a level of um, excellent achievement, right? So if it comes back to public speaking, what's your purpose in that speech? Are you there to influence, inform, persuade, I guess the same as influence, right? Or just to, you know, uh, you know, branding exercise, whatever. Find the purpose of what your speaking engagement is going to be, right? Okay. And then figure out the goal. What's the vision for that purpose? And then put in the systems in place to help you excel at that public speaking moment. So every time you speak in public, either online or offline, becomes you have to identify the purpose, 
engage in those uh, outlines, those systems, learn how to learn, and then execute. Okay, so that's what I mean by purpose elements. So like I said, there's not just one purpose, in my opinion, there's not just one purpose for me in my life. There's many purposes. And you need to be true, right? You need to be able to identify that. And then the last thing, which separates those true overachievers from the rest of us, is that superior work ethic. You combine all of that with, a, you know, the endurance, the discipline of work, of the practice. And that's what's gonna separate you from everybody else. If you combine all those three, be authentic, find the purpose, get those systems in place, and then execute with a superior work ethic. Makes sense, right? It's not that difficult. It's <laughs> easier said than done. That's why my job is here just to give you guys <laughs> the systems, the framework, right? But all I'm doing is just basically curating everything that I've experienced for the last 20 years in Jakarta, in my time in New York, and of course my time in architectural school. So if you look at this material, it's basically going through my whole life experience from architectural school, uh, graphic design, uh, corporate communications in New York City, and then being an English trainer and uh, business develop um, consultant here in Jakarta. And it's basically in this material. Okay, I apologize. I went really slow. I took a lot of time on this, but I hope uh, you guys found it interesting. And that's it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I want to leave you with this. This is maybe if you know or do not know, this is Warren Buffett, responsible for Berkshire Hathaway. Yes. If you want to buy a share of Berkshire Hathaway, it will cost you over $300,000 for one share. Um, so basically, he's saying he was talking to a panel of Stanford students, students at Stanford, and they asked him, what's the best skill that they should focus on? And surprisingly, he didn't say finance. He didn't say about, you know, management. It was about communication, public speaking, right? But he's also talking about how you communicate yourself and share and show your value to wherever you are at that point of life. Do not accept what they offer you, all right? You have to make sure you know your worth and you fight for your worth, okay? I find a lot of Indonesians are too embarrassed or too scared to negotiate for their salary because they're afraid they're going to look like, you know, um, I don't know, greedy. Yeah. That's stupid, though. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You only get what you ask for, right? So you have to communicate that. You have to know your worth and communicate your worth. And don't accept less. If that company doesn't want to give you what you're worth, go find another company. Find the people that value your worth, but make sure you can back it up, right? Uh, don't fall for that imposter syndrome also. All right, that's it. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Wow. All right. Thank you, Alan, for your amazing <laughs> presentation. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really inspired us, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, guys. So thank you for uh, still being here. And the next one is we're going to have an FGD class. As per usual, we're going to uh, put you to our breakout rooms and to discuss about our topics or materials. And we already divide it into six rooms. First one is Rama. Rama, hello, are you there? Okay, there is Rama. You guys will uh, discuss about FNB startup. And the next one is Dina. You guys will going to have uh, crowdfunding. Elsa, you guys were going to talk about health, health, yeah, health startup. Beverly, e-commerce, and Coco FinTech, and Dela is about uh, consulting. So you guys will talk about it on your breakout rooms and enjoy, guys. Um, Rene, do you want me to explain what we're oh, gonna yeah. do in the Oh yeah, all right, room? all right. Yeah, you, you can do okay. it. Okay, so the, the facilitators that you join the breakout room have already been told that you will have been assigned as the committee of a startup. So you are the founders of a startup, okay? So there are gonna be different startups like Rini just mentioned. 
Now, your goal in that startup is to identify what are the hard skills required for your startup to be success. That's number one. Okay, you better write this down because I'm I'm making you guys focus on your listening comprehension, and you need to work on your writing. Right. So number one, don't write it in Indonesian. Okay, write it in English. Okay. <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> Okay, so number one, you need to identify what are the hard skills that will make your startup a success. It will be different because we gave you all different types of startups. That's number one. Number two, what are the hard skills and soft skills required by the leader of that startup for it to become successful, to have a successful culture, right? Like we said, the culture of an organization that replicates or mimics the culture or the soft skills and hard skills of its leader. So that's number two, okay? Number three, what are the systems you need to put in place? What is the purpose of your startup? And then what are the systems, the vision, purpose, vision, and systems for your startup to be successful? Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the outlines. I'm talking about the feedback system, right? And what is the learning you need to do in your startup? What do you need to research, right? Okay. And then on number four will be the summary. So what am I doing here? If there are four people in a breakout room, it's up to you to choose, right? If you go, Rini, are we gonna only have one speaker or four speakers per breakout room? Yeah, uh, they were going to have six speakers for uh, four people. Well, we're going to be here for the next five hours <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if everybody speaks. Right. So what I suggest is that two people per yeah. breakout room, just two people oh. per breakout room will present their startup, like I just mentioned, okay? Oh. Right. What are the hard skills? What are the soft skills and hard skills of the leader? And then what are the systems in place for that startup to be successful? So there's basically three things, right, for those two well, one or two, it's up to you guys to decide in each breakout room. Okay, so I think that's a lot to work with and it's very interesting. And then based on what you guys just went through in my material, I want very excited to hear what you guys come up with. It'd be cool if you could come up with a name and logo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about the logo. Maybe a name for your startup, okay? Make it interesting and try not to copy paste. Okay, I don't wanna hear any PDS. <laughs> Or go this, go that. <laughs> no, no, it's your it's your room. Okay, do whatever you want. Okay, all right, that's it. Thank you. Good luck, and I'll be back. I'll I'll be waiting here for your presentations, your public speaking presentations. See you in the breakout room, guys. Okay, see you guys. Okay, Bella. Okay, guys. Have a weekend, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see you, yeah. Still motivated to be here to discuss about, yeah, today's topic. So, as uh, as our men our MCs today is mentioned, so we will gonna talk about um consulting consulting company so uh maybe some of you guys want to be volunteer to be our founder hey guys i think you are already a great leader you can be the founder <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 let's uh, let's move to the question maybe yeah guys and uh, the first one i, I will see uh can you can Previously is turn the camera. Hi. And Canadia. Hi Canadia. Could you please turn on your camera? I'm sorry, I have a problem with my camera. I tried so, so much, so many times for my camera. I don't know. Ah, it's okay. It's totally okay. 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 Maybe like let's go. Uh we talk about um consulting company, yeah. Guys. Okay. Like you know, um, what's a consult? What's the hard skill do you require for consulting company? 
what's the hard skill to make a consulting company it successful? Maybe from Edwin, do you want to answer? Okay, <laughs> I think it depends on in what in what field we are working. Like if we are working in a consulting skill that uh, selling service on accounting, maybe we can uh, we should have competency in accounting. We have to you know enrich ourselves with uh, how to deal with the reports, how to make a good report how to uh, decrease our tax by trying to window dress our financial report and how to have a better profit or, or maybe like how to represent our uh, financial statements to the regulator. So yes, maybe knowledge regarding the in what field we are working. If we are working in accounting, so we have to build our accounting skills. Maybe... Uh, I think like let's see this this um company as a big four you know big four company, consulting like Deloitte. Maybe you ever 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 heard about Ernest and Young? Yeah, let's see about uh accounting accounting company. Sure. How about you, Kanikan? What's the hard skill required? to be successful in accounting consulting? Yes, I think uh, the employee needs to be like competent in communication and in accounting. Yeah. yeah, if we are in a consultant accounting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, That's I, a good thing. Uh, for, for general, yeah. Um, consult uh, for general consulting company. I thought it's con communication is is the the hard skill required high hard skill. Yeah, because we will solving the problem, and we need to having great communication for deliver our um, way to solving their problem. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's right. And if I can add, I think we should have a good uh, bilingual skills to, you know, like speak in different language. Uh, knowing that uh, in Indonesia now we have uh, many companies that is not Indonesian based, but they are using English as their language uh, in their company and workplace. So I think it's important for us to have a uh, bilingual skill to speak in different language and hire professionals in uh, on it. Okay, great. Okay, I, I will move to. Uh, I see. Uh, Kak Nadia first, I guess. Kak Nadia, how do you think? What's the required hard skill to be successful on consulting company? Kak Nadia, are you there? Yes. Maybe. Uh, in my opinion. Uh. We need to have an approachment skill. We want to approach someone uh, as our customers. We need to understand how to teach the, uh, how to treat them well. We need to make them comfort when they consult anything to us. Oh, okay. This is a great point of view. <laughs> I see Kanini um, just join. Ka how how I call you, Kanini Kurnia? Yeah, you can call me Nini. Okay, Kanini. Uh, how do you think about what's the required hard skill to be successful on trading company? On consulting company, I'm sorry, trading. <laughs> because I'm I work sorry. on trading. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just actually just uh, joined to Kak Berfell room before. Ah. Oh. And then you have a trouble connection. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I already assigned you. I think okay. you can continue. Yeah. Okay, sure. Maybe Kar Ka Karini, you wanna answer? Nope. It's pretty oh. busy around here. Okay, 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 okay. 
since uh, your point of view guys so great okay let's move to the second question like what the hard what hard and soft skill that is required for a leader of consulting company maybe from kak niken <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think the hard skill is uh, skill in accounting and then advertising. So they can uh, advertising their company, our company, <laughs> to get uh, clients and then um, public relations. That is. What the soft skill? How about the soft skill? The soft skills is like for leaders to be successful on consulting company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, to expand their relation and then to be confident. Yeah. Communicative. That's for me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, like it's great answer. How about uh, Nadia maybe? Uh, for me, maybe uh, when you are a, an, an owner of, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what, what's the uh, hard or soft skill uh, for leaders uh, for make the mm -hmm. consulting company successful? Oh, they, they need to... Uh, Treat, uh, they need to treat their employees well and then after what they they need to uh, he needs to you know like give a great example for his employees in his company okay that's all yeah that's all okay okay that's great we you know you <laughs> i want to hear from Gaidwin. Okay, for the hard skill, I think the most important the, the most important thing is competency uh, regarding accounting and also uh, how can you uh, advertise and promote your consulting company so that they can be well known to uh, many companies, especially in Indonesia because we are working in an Indonesian company. And for the soft skill, I think the most important things are the first thing is integrity because we are building trust in front of our companies or clients, I would say. So we need to have uh, integrity and maintain it uh, to keep our commitment in front of our clients so that they can uh, repeat, uh, how to say that, not order maybe, how they can uh, use our service for uh, a long time in the long run. And of course, problem solving, because we need to solve their problem. They are coming to us with problems and troubles, and they want yeah. to uh, have a solution from us. So it's important for us to have the critical thinking and solve the problem of our client. Yes, that's so great, Ovine. I, I totally agree that that's an integrity, the problem solving is the... Um, required skill for leaders because we are building company right we we need to make trust for our client to make the company successful because we need a uh, like customer like for make the company grow yeah we need to more and more new customer yeah is it that's great edwin okay maybe the next one you know like uh for a leader, we also we we already talk about um, skill for the employee until the leaders. What's the purpose? What the system for um, for the company? What's the great system for make it the company uh, successful? What do you think, guys? Maybe some of you without without I should to 
What's the one? What, who do one wanna answer? Maybe Edwin? Do you wanna answer? <laughs> Actually, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, but yeah, okay. I will. I will try. Maybe yeah. um, we can have a great vision from the start. Like, we want to be the best uh, consulting company in mm -hmm. maybe start from the local area from Jakarta. We want to be the best in Jakarta. Uh, it is the vision, and maybe in the next several years we can expand our uh, community so that it can be bigger and it can uh, expand and spread to other regions too uh, besides Jakarta. And for the system and outline, I'm, I'm not quite sure what should I say about <laughs> what is the outline and the system. I'm not, I'm not really understanding it actually. Like, like the way you the way you action for pursue your purpose, your goals. Oh, okay. The action yeah. we can do. Maybe uh, frequently advertise our company because we are starting a startup. We have to advertise it using our social media, website, and maybe YouTube channel if we have it. Because nowadays, uh, people tend to look at their smartphone frequently and then they don't see advertising on newspaper anymore so it's important for us to place our advertisement there and then try to train our employees because we are new it means that our employee our employees maybe all of our employees are still new too so we need to expand and also build their skills especially yeah. in accounting Yes, yes, I, I'm totally agree. That's external, externally and internally uh, action for for pursuing uh, the consulting goals. Yeah, consulting company goals. Yeah, that's great. I mean, like, uh, because we are in digital native era right now, we need to um, uh, how to say yeah, um, to share to promote and advertise our our how to say because we in, in service service in uh, the, the to the people yeah yeah i totally agree how about kanika Could... yeah thank you dela i do agree with you and also edwin yeah so the vision is yeah we provide the consulting service to the local people and advertise it. Of course, we have to hire the uh, competent people in their job, like, such as in advertising. So we can develop maybe the website and campaigns through the social media. And then also we have a um, computer engineer who are competent. Uh, in software and hardware installation, in the internet. So yeah, and then we also have to build trust with the client yes. so we can provide um, guidance when they need consult from us. That is for me. <laughs> Thank you, Dela. Yeah, okay. Anytime. Wow, it's so cool too, yeah? Because, um, uh, in this era, which is like we used to maximize uh, many platform to advertise our our service, our co company business, yeah, especially in the pandemic situation like nowadays, yeah, that's very helpful. How about uh, where is it? Canada left or uh, maybe just three of us, yeah. Okay, I think I I I I wonder like we like Kani can mention we need to hire like professional high quality uh person for work with us. Uh, how how when the company budget still mm, not enough for yeah you know what I mean for spend and for give them salary. What's your solution? 
Who anyone wanna answer it first? <laughs> Let's go. Maybe we can search for investors <laughs> because we are still a startup, so we need to find an investor that can give us a large amount of money, so we don't have to worry about our, you know, like employees and how to give them salary so yes starting from having uh you know like a proper investor would be really great oh um as as our conductor said we were like uh, our culture in our country indonesia is failure it's kind of it's kind of not um you know like it's Failure culture is not accept. It's not you know how you you um, make your investor when you approach him to make uh, them trust with the company. Edwin, I ask you because you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, yes, of course, as uh, Sir Alan have already mentioned too, that Indonesian speakers tend to not trust yeah. people no. that they yeah, have faced failures in their process. So I think we can use not only our advertising skills, but also our billing well skills so that we can not, we can not only attract local investors, but also foreign investors. Foreign investors are more open-minded. So yeah, maybe we can take that opportunity to grab <laughs> the investors to invest in our company. Maybe. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah. In case when you don't have any networking for rich foreign investor, <laughs> how is it going? How are you um, coping with that? So let's start if we already have the investors and don't start if we don't, you know, if we don't get money from the investors. So start okay. carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, prepare is also important, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move to Ganiken. How, how about you? <laughs> I would like to add in. <laughs> we have to find an investor in order to hire um, someone who is professional in their job. Or yeah. we can also like maybe hire an uh, intern although maybe they're not really professional but yeah we can um, train them something like that <laughs> that's for me thank you Dema. for saving money yeah so we we hire intern <laughs> that's why <laughs> okay that's a great idea i thought <laughs> okay so uh how uh, how you prepare when you want to start maybe a consulting company? What do you prepare? Uh, Bella, I think we're already uh, running out of time. So oh. we're going to have to back, go back to the main room, yeah? Okay, maybe we, we talk about this interesting topic. So One on. minute left, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I, I will choose the summarize of this. Um, room, yeah. Who wanna be volunteer to be representative of our? <laughs> I I said we like oh not me. <laughs> we need more time. Our Hi guys, we need more time. <laughs> we need Hello. More time. Hi, we're Hi leave. everyone, welcome back. <laughs> wow, there's oh. We have to wait for others, yeah. 10 seconds. How your discussion, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds really interesting, of course. But it's pretty tough to define what kind of stuff would you like to over it? Because uh, my discussion is talking about uh, economics. Wow. Hello, hello. Uh, uh, welcome back to the main room. Okay, I guess everyone's already in the main room, yeah? Yeah. 
Okay, so I think we have to start about the representation, yeah? Who wants to start it first? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We yeah, need guys. more time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys only have... <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yes, definitely more time. <laughs> Why don't you guys just summarize what you did discuss? In your group, no matter how far you got. So, can my group go first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's up to you guys. Okay, Coco, maybe Coco, you can start it first. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, there are three three person in our group. Uh, Dega, Obi, and Debbie. And because Debbie is our first timer here, and Debbie, uh. Would you please to be our reps for today's uh, class? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And well, I guess you got one minute, yeah, for each group to represent what you guys talk in the discussion room. Okay, maybe Debbie, you can start. Oh, I'm the speaker. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, thank you for uh, this. My first. Uh, first time presentation. Uh, uh, I'm the group uh, with Dega, Bobby, and uh, Coco, and me. We discussion about fintech startup, and more for uh, most for us. Sorry, Coco, maybe uh, you can uh, yes give me support. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Sure, okay. Um, I. Fintech uh, for me is uh, like the pinjol. We use the technology uh, more effective. So either we loan from bank. And uh, Coco asked what we chose Fintech startup or investment. It's investment with uh, another way. Uh, for me and for another, uh, use uh, most fintech startup, but uh, we want to make fintech startup more uh, polite. Uh, the name uh, sahabat or bayar dibayarin. <laughs> the name uh, we have fintech startup. Maybe uh, the next I want to make the fintech startup right, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, fintech startup we choose like the GoPay, but uh, we uh, use the two method like the uh, we use the deposit we can deposit our money the first or uh, we can pay later something like that and uh, maybe we try to more polite not use debt collector. Uh, maybe with debt collector is the hard if the the, the creditor or the debitor uh, can pay uh, the loan. I think that's up from me. Maybe Coco can uh, support my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, Debbie. Thank you so Thank much. You, Debbie. Back to the host. Okay. All right then. Um, maybe Alan, do you want to say something or we can just go to other group? Yeah, just go to the other groups and then okay. we'll summarize. Okay, Dela. Okay, Alan. Dela? Oh, uh, in main room group, uh, consists Adrian, uh, Niken, and also Nadia. But unfortunately, unfortunately Nadia have terrible connection, so... Uh, maybe I will um, choose Edwin for be our <laughs> representative when we need to sound it up. <laughs> so the uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dela. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. I'm actually a first timer too. Uh, so nice to see you all. Uh, so we. we we're talking about uh, building a startup that is an accounting consulting company. We didn't talk about the name yet, <laughs> but we just want to be as big as the big four. We want to uh, give the best uh, consulting to all companies exist in Indonesia, especially. So the first thing talking about hard skill, 
we were talking about the hard skill required for our company and uh, we've come up with uh, competency in accounting and also um, public speaking. And to add one more, uh, advertising skills, because we need to advertise our consultings to be well-known in Indonesia and to other countries too. Uh, it's related to the next question, actually. And the second is uh, hard skill and soft skill. Hard skill and soft skill required for leaders. For the hard skill, <laughs> we were back again to competency and also public speaking, advertising skills, because it's kind of the same and similar actually. Uh, and for the soft skill, I think the leader needs to be um, uh, needs to have a good uh, negotiation skills, and they have to uh, establish a good problem solving skill. They need to solve problems uh, from their clients because clients come with uh, problems uh, surely. So we need to solve their problems and have a critical thinking to solve it uh, and give the best solution for them. And for the third question, the system and outline and also feedback. Actually, our vision is uh, to be the best consulting company in Jakarta. And in the next several years, if we are doing really well, we will expand it to other cities in Indonesia too. And we will start by finding investors. We use our advertising skills to, in, uh, to attract investors to invest in our startup companies. And if we have grabbed the investors, maybe from the local one or the foreign, because the local tends to afraid of failure. So we can also grab the foreign investors. We can uh, grab the money. And if we have enough budget, we can hire several experts. But uh, we also will hire intern because <laughs> we can pay less <laughs> if we hire an intern. So we don't have to, you know, like prepare uh, so much, uh, so many budgets for uh, their salary. And maybe that's all I can tell to all of you. If you want to add Niken or uh, Dela, thank you all. <laughs> okay, thank you, Edwin. <laughs> thank you, nice Edwin. Presentation. <laughs> okay, the next one is Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Oh, okay, my turn. Yeah. Right. In my group, we have Lydia, Nini, and Odi, but our uh, will be the representative is going to Nidia. Hi, Nidia. Uh, don't worry, Chair, I'm mute. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. And our group get e commerce startup. And for the first question, type of leader and culture that we want is uh, we want a leader who has a good at public speaking. So uh, the leader can give us, uh, give the staff some motivation and inspiring of work ethic and then being a good listener. So uh, um, the CEO can listen to the problem of the company and from uh, maybe advice from the public. And then next to second question, hard skill for e-commerce. I think it will be database, technology, website programming, server management system, uh, UE and UX designer. And then for soft skills, it's maybe communication, like how the staff can communicate uh, if there are any problems with buyer and seller or maybe any fraud. Um, and then uh, expanding networking, uh, good listener, 
good public speaking and confident. And then for the third question, systems would we like to run is we will running a research so we can be the number one e-commerce in Indonesia by doing some uh, research for marketing strategy and defining uh, which will be our target market and um, finding about shipping, what is uh, fast and affordable shipping, and then uh, gathering information about user experience based on our website. And then, yeah, I think that's all. Um, maybe Nini will be give some another. Oh, okay. So actually our platform is focusing about basic to selling basic nets to customer and also we prioritize about the fast and affordable shipping to the customer and how do we do that so the system is going so first we are going to expand our networking first to get stakeholder to uh to have a teamwork with us for example like for the shipping for, for the shipping corporate and then uh, we, we trying hard to make a better solution about our vision. So I hope uh, that the customer will be attracted about our uh, platform, which is we are going to provide messiness to the customer. And our, our so uh, we hope that our platform gonna be the first and the largest of the in Indonesia. I think that's it. That's for me. Wow, okay, thank you, Nadia and Nini. All right, the next one is Rama's group. Hello, Rama. Hi, everyone. So my group, um, actually, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy for today's class because we've got a lot of newcomers here. Uh, in fact, uh, I have two in my room. Uh, we have Kak Slamet, Kak Rahman, who are um, our newcomers. We also have Kak Ilham and Kak Acho in our group. And uh, we have discussed uh, our projects as, a, as an F&B company, uh, which will be uh, explained by Kak Slamet. Hello, Kak Slamet. Your screen, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, I would like to thanks for uh, joining in Brisbane community because this that's this my first time to join in Brisbane to improve my skill in English. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Lama Trianto. I would like to explain about my product. My product is Jamu. Uh, uh, why uh, I uh, why our group is just Jamu because Jamu uh, is more healthy that, uh, than medicine. Uh, because nowadays, uh, you know what I mean, uh, in pandemic, uh, pandemic uh, time, uh, at the present, uh, to keep my body uh, more health is uh, have to need the jamu. Uh, I think in uh, in uh, our our opinion. So uh, the kinds of product uh, uh, jamu that uh, we have to uh, share to you is wedang uh, uwo, but in uh, tea bag uh, packaging because it's more simple than uh, than uh, jamu that uh, packaging in powder powder in uh, powder packaging yeah uh, why I uh, can explain that it's more simple because uh, that's uh, the there is uh, no need to uh, uh, to I think to decide the measurement, how many, how many, uh, how many spawns uh, jamu that we need. Uh, but in tea bag packaging, is uh, we have we only uh, we only uh, put in the water and then we uh, we stir by spawn and then yeah, uh, finally it can be enjoyed by and uh, for everyone. Uh, 
to make a startup in Jammu uh, company, we have to uh, hard skill and soft skill. Hard skill, uh, we have to need something like uh, a good mich a good machine, and then we have to good uh, identification for a market, and then we have to control uh, the product, and then we have uh, to uh good in delivery delivery shipping uh, to customer uh, but in soft skill uh, besides we have to uh, need hard skill communication skill to uh, offer our product to the customer so that uh, our product can be uh, accepted by a customer and then we have to innovative unique and uh, we have uh, uh, more uh, more care, uh, more creative uh, out of the box thinking uh, to make a jambo product. Yeah, uh, that's it for me. For another, maybe uh, Mr. Rama can uh, share for additional info. Thank you so much, Kaslamat, for explaining uh, our very out of the box product. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you, Slavat, and thank you, Rama. Okay, next is Elsa. Oh, Hello, Elsa's group. Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello, everyone. Elsa. Uh, in my health startup, is I choose the name is Sarah. Where is the Sarah? Is a. Uh, I'm here representative of the, this group. Okay, let's go, Sarah. Okay, um, Ezra, can you help me out with the name? I forgot again. Okay, Dangwaras. 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 There you go. <laughs> the name is that. <clears throat> the name is the Japanese. And our purpose is pretty much to provide customer-based health as assistance and their hard skills requirements uh vital signs and basic procedures which means uh before patients are assigned to see a doctor or a physician assistant we need to make sure uh, we need to measure and record patient uh, vital signs such as height weight blood pressure uh, pulse symptoms medications etc and the second hard skills that we need to that we require to work or for a health assistance platform to work very well is bookkeeping and office skills which means we need to familiarize ourselves with uh, different platforms to basic accounting that data entry etc um and the third one is medical administration and an inventory and i don't think i need to explain that and the fourth one is a CPR and a first aid. So getting CPR certified ahead of time can actually uh, leave more room in your schedule for other medical assistant classes later on. And the last but not least, for heart skills, we have uh, infection control and safety guidelines, which means we need to provide guidelines and policies for managing the risk of uh, spreading infections relevant to the patients we serve. As for soft skills, we have empathy, communication skills, teamwork, stress yeah. management, uh, receptive aptitude, which means we are um, receptive to critics and um, uh, positive feedback, and also uh, confidence, patience, at attentiveness, adaptability. So in conclusion, basic medical skills, specialized um, medical skills a great communication as well as attentiveness could make an impeccable health service thank you very much thank you for coming to my TED talk thank you Sarah. wow thank you zara for your presentation it's really thank nice <laughs> and the last one is dina hello dina hi karini thank you for the opportunity yeah in my fgd despite of the trouble connection it's going great and we have our first timer here to represent our group, which is Kajang. Hi, Kajang. Hello, everyone. You may introduce our startup company. Okay. Um, thank you so much. So our group topic 
is about the crowdfunding, the crowdfunding. And now I would like to um, explain our discussion result. So for the name of our startup company is Easy Fun, and we also have a tagline, Easy Fun is fun. So as you know, guys, there is kitabisa.com, you know, where people don't need their money to, you know, to help people who can't afford for, you know, pay the hospital and something. But in our company, it's not only for the sick people, we also help the people to run their business, you know. So then the, the skills that we need in our startup company, the first skill is the hard skill. The first one is accounting because we collect money from the people. So then um, we need the person who can, you know, man manage the money really well. And also the legal skill because we, you know, we want to prevent any legal issues that can possibly arise in the business preparation in the future. And then also the finance analysis, the business management, the risk management, and also the IT skill because uh, we want to run this business online. That's why we need the person who, you know, capable in the IT system. And also the soft skill, we need the leadership, persuasive communication skills and promotion skills for the people so they can donate their money and trust us to manage their money to help people out there. And also what kind of cultures that we need on our startup company. The first one is accountable, transparency and fast response. That's all, thank you. Maybe wow. one of them want to add more of our discussion results. <laughs> Thank you, Ajung. And thank you, Dina. Thank you for you guys. You have already got a good presentation. And maybe, Alan, do you have something to say for your closing statement? <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize for taking up so much of your time. Um, I think I got carried away. Uh, <laughs> for a startup mentality, you want to keep in mind that the founders and early employees won't be actually have a salary at most times. They'll be given shares in the company. So that's how you can not worry about an investor in the beginning. And then the goal of a startup is to create the MVP, the minimum viable product. And then you want to go to market and get the data, the traction, the customers. Once you have the customers, then you can then approach investors and show them, look, I have customers who believe in my uh, business model. I think there's a good market. I think you should look at it and consider it as an investment. So you want to have that steps in place. So that's part of the, the outline, right? Is like come up with a business idea, find the great people to work with, create the product, uh, publish the product and get the business traction. Okay, so that's the key word in there was traction. Uh, the second thing, uh, what was that? in the accounting, yeah, uh, business data, which is called traction, yeah, and uh, the goal of generating traction. I suggest giving shares to the founders. And then for Ramas F&B, Tolak Angin in English is what? <laughs> I think it's herbal, herbal supplement. Yeah, but what do you translate Tolak Angin to? Uh, the wind. Wind denying or something. <laughs> wind denial. Reject the wind. Reject the wind. <laughs> wind denying. Cancel wind. I like to call it wind. Cancel, cancel wind. wind. So you're canceling the wind after the wind enters. <laughs> after entering the wind, you need to cancel the wind. So that's the, and I find that very unique to Indonesia for some reason. In the Philippines, there's no cancel wind. Only in Indonesia, but then that comes with the crop and all that kind of stuff also. <laughs> all right. Um, but no, you guys did great. I'm sorry again for taking up so much time. You guys do deserve a lot of more time in your FGDs, but uh, hopefully next time you'll have a better speaker than me. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, thank I'll you very much. You next time, Alan. My pleasure. My pleasure. I um, hope to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And guys, thank you for coming. Maybe we have to take our tradition, yeah? Photo, after photo tradition, maybe, Rama, can you help us to take the picture, please? Sure, I'm going to take over to uh, take our picture. So please, uh, I'm going to count backwards. 
Uh, so we have, uh, I think we only have one. Yeah, one screen. Yeah, one, one screen, right? So please keep your smile for like three or five seconds, okay? Okay. Prepare your best smile, everyone. In three, two, one. Got it. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Guys, thank you for so much for coming to our class today. And thank you, Alan, for your amazing presentation. You already built up our confidence and we know how to propose our life and to build up our confidence. And for uh, the member, thank you for coming for the first timers too. And for those of you who has already uh, filled out the Google form, you will guys get, uh, you will guys contact by the WSE, Wall Street English. So you can uh, maybe check your level English there and maybe pay us a visit. Alan is on Living World, Wall Street Living World. And I usually come to Gandaria City Center or Pacific Place. So if you want to pay us a visit and do a level check, please contact us. Okay, guys, thank you for today. Thank you, thank Alan. You. Thank you, everyone. Happy thank weekend. You. Please stay safe, guys. Thank you, Mr. Alan. Thank You're you. welcome, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you Alan. Thank you. Enjoy the long weekend. Okay. Enjoy your Have weekend. Have a weekend, everyone. Yeah, you're welcome, Ilham. Thank, 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 thank you, Ilham. Thank you, Ilham. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Slamet. Bye, Ilham. Bye, Rahmadani. Okay, guys. I think we still got... Oh. Yeah. Still got one member. Yeah. Oh, uh, nah. I think it's all us now. Wow, uh, that's all right. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> oh.